Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today for this painting tutorial. I just wanted to show you guys a quick and easy way of painting a dramatic looking cityscape. So this is what I'm going to be showing you guys how to paint today. So I'm going to be showing you guys some really simple and effective brush techniques, brush strokes, and color mixing so that you can paint at a level you never thought you could. If you think you're just a beginner, I'm here to show you that you're capable of painting way more than you thought you were. So stay tuned, hit subscribe, and let's get started. Okay, everybody, for this painting tutorial, I'm going to begin by going over the colors and the size canvas we're using. This is an 11 by 14 stretched primed canvas. We've got the following colors today. Black, titanium white, teal, light blue violet, neon pink, red, orange, and yellow cool. I'll have a list of all the colors and brushes below the video in the description box. And I'm just going to choose this number nine filbert brush today. And this is what we're going to use to not only wet the canvas a little bit, um, but create the basic um, grayscale cloud shapes uh, in the sky and also below in the water for the reflection. So we're going to use this uh, for that very first step. We're going to dry it off and then we're going to come over top with all our beautiful colors here. So I'm going to show you guys a really interesting and effective technique for approaching your paintings. We just want to get a little bit of water on there before we add our paint because by doing this, it's going to help spread the paint around and make it a lot easier for us. And then before that can dry, just going to take my white right away again with the same brush and you can use a, a smaller filbert brush if you want. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter. We know that acrylic paint dries darker. If you're brand new and you're just tuning in now and you're being introduced to acrylics, they dry one to two shades darker than what they look like going on wet. So it's something really important to know prior to painting. Okay, so we know we want the clouds to be going in a very dramatic sweeping direction uh, from, we're gonna go, we're gonna add our horizon line below halfway. That's also another very important tip when creating a dramatic perspective. Um, so our clouds are gonna start from here and go up. So let's just go ahead and just simply pull a line across for our horizon. This gives us a guide of knowing where the water separates from the sky and to start our clouds. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more water. Mix up some more paint. And we're just gonna start sweeping. And I like this brush because look at already, we get a little bit of round effect. So on a little bit of an angle, not very much pressure, we're gonna create these sweeping little scoops, very exaggerated. You can make them a little bit smaller here. So long, narrow scoops, and then they're gonna get wider and start to turn. So they're going up here in this direction, and then gradually they're going to start to straighten out here, following along with the horizon. Okay, let's practice that a little bit more. This time I'm going to add some more white. If we get some lighter shades of gray in here, that'll help to create more shades when we come over top with our colors. Okay, so I'm just going to use the point, pointy end here. Scoop and sweep, scoop and sweep. It helps to even say it out loud or just in your head as you're making the brush strokes. It just helps to remind you if you're saying it while you're doing it, um, it'll be more effective. Okay, add a little bit more in here and you can layer as much as you want. And now I'm going to start with the reflection in the water. So the reflection in the water is going to be a mirrored image, right? So it's going to be, um, or flipped, I guess you would say. So it's going to be the opposite. So instead of going up like this, it's going to start from here and go down like this. 
So we're just going to do the same thing. And if it helps, you can also turn, take your canvas out and turn it upside down. And that might make it a little bit easier for you. But just follow along with me right now. So we're just going to do these little long sweeping scoops. And we're going this direction. So from the left corner, you're aiming for down here, the right bottom corner. Scoop, scoop. And we're going to have some reflections of uh, the buildings as well. So we don't have to make this exactly like how it is above. Okay. It's going to be a little bit more blurry and dramatic, but we have a basic outline here and a composition. So this is where it starts to get a little bit more blurry and it does up here too. This is where we're going to get a nice blending of colors. Use a little bit of water here and mix up some more paint. We're going to add our buildings after at the very end with black and that's going to help really make them uh, make that silhouette and really stand out. We'll add a few little highlights for some shine and lights on the windows of the building too. I'm just going to show you guys throughout this video simple, simple, non-intimidating ways to approach your paintings so that no matter what level you're at, if you're just starting, you can go ahead and um, approach a painting like this that you probably don't think that you're ready for, but I'm here to show you guys you really are. And I'm going to come in with my first color. So I'm going to choose my lightest color first. I'll take some white with my neon yellow. Cool. You can use um, any other types of yellows or any other variations of these colors that we have here. If you've been following me for a while, you guys know that I um, really, really enjoy my neon and luminous paints, but you can paint this same painting in regular non-neon colors. Okay, well, I'm going to come right in here and this is where you don't have to worry about uh, going over that gray. That's what it's there for. You want to go over it. It's dominant and it's going to show up. And we're going to be left with beautiful mid-tones and shadows. So as I'm adding this color up top, I'm going to add it down below as well. So whatever I do up here, I'm going to do down below. So I'll come in here. And you can definitely use a little bit of water on your brush if you want. If you want yours to be a little bit brighter, see how bright that is, then you can just use uh, less white. It all depends on what you want. Because I'm going to show you guys how to layer and make new colors. I'm going to um, demonstrate that right now. So I'll add the lighter, softer shade of the yellow that we used white to soften with. And then I'll also use, I'll also show you guys full strength. Okay, so we've got it up here and we've also got it down here, somewhat mimicking what's going on up top. Okay, for the next color, I'm not even going to wash my brush out because um, I'm going to be uh, using a little bit of 
the neon orange now. So I'm going to take that with my yellow. A really bright, beautiful, like tangerine orange color. And <clears throat> I'm just going to start up in here. So just where we left off with that yellow, and you can go over top of it and create another shade. And look how pretty it looks overlapped when we go over that gray with it. It's really pretty. Okay, I'm taking just a little bit of water now. I'm going to go in and around some of these scoops here. Down in here, so we're going to overlap. A little bit I'm not covering up all of that yellow that I put down there take a little bit more white the white with that orange alone is uh, really pretty it'll create more of a almost like a pinky orange And then I'm going to take, without washing my brush up, a little bit of red next. And that'll give us a nice soft pinky color too. And we'll start incorporating some of that and adding and layering over partially. Some longer sweeping strokes here. So you can alternate your white and the amount of red you want. I like going back and forth and sometimes using a little bit more of the red. Sometimes creating softer just by adding a little bit of that white take a little bit of more of that orange bit more of the orange in here. Okay, for the next color, I'm going to go into my pink. A little bit of water and a little bit of white. This is going to be a different, a different shade of pink then by adding the red and white. This is a cool pink. So see what I'm doing here? I'm making these little scallops, all these little scoops, a little bit tighter together. And then pulling longer sweeping strokes all the way up to the right corner. Okay, now it's time to go down below and do the same thing. So, all these little scoops, scoop, scoop, scoop. If you really want to get a nice control with your brush, then only focus on loading it right on the very tip here. Keep those bristles nice and tight together.
I'm gonna wash my brush out now and start with the next color. Okay, the next color will be our blue violet. I'm gonna mix my neon pink with my blue violet. A little bit of white. And right here, I'm just gonna start pulling very gently right on the horizon and then make sure I get that nice flat shape and my brush loaded up. Go over some of those existing scoops of pink and orange and yellow. Start from down here. Take some more white. This way we'll get some softer tones. Really pretty. Helps to have just a little bit of water in here too. It'll help really all that paint around the canvas. Okay, we're gonna start our scoops this way now. bit more water, a little bit of white. You can take this sky that I'm showing you how to paint and create any landscape you want with it. You could have a bridge, trees, a house. Okay, now I'm going to take full strength light blue violet. And I'm going to start pulling strips from the outside in. Do the same down here. It's a good idea to do it right away. That way you won't forget to come back later. You can make them different widths as well. You can have some skinnier ones. I'm just going to wash my brush out. <clears throat> Excuse me, now that I've lifted the bar up, I can add a little bit more of uh, the warm colors. So I'll just use what I've got left here. A little bit of orange, white, and the pink. Just gonna add a little bit of that right in here too. So we still have our blue teal, now you could use turquoise if you want. 
whatever turquoise or teal you want. This is by Artist Loft, if you're curious. I'm going to come in here. Partially over the yellow. And we'll bring some down here as well. And then I'm going to add a few little scoops in here too. A little bit of layering. Be sure to remember to work that paint out of your brush and then have it on the tip where you really need it. Okay, again, looking above where we've got it here and adding it below. You really can't go wrong when using um, pastel colors. All of them together look good. Okay, so at any point, if you want to add some more color, you definitely can. I've got a little bit of a clean brush, a little bit of my neon pink. My brush is just a little bit damp. I could have it even a little bit um, more wet. Um, but let's see how we do with this. So I'm just going to come in and layer over. Yeah, it'll help to have a little bit of water on there, a little bit more water. So again, this is full strength just with some water, no white. And this will just give us a little bit more punch of color. So I'm going to Take some of um, my yellow and add some down here too. Okay, if you're curious, this is the brand I'm using, Holbein Acrylic Luminous Series, and this is the Lemon. All right, so a clean brush, a little bit damp. The more water you use, uh, the more pale it's going to be. It'll be very weak in color. So I just use the bare minimum uh, that I need of the water. So I'm going to start, see that, how beautiful it is? That's over the, the teal and the yellow and a little bit of, a little bit of the blue violet as well. But now when we come over here, look at how bright that is. Here we go over some of that pink, pink and red and orange. We'll just get a beautiful beautiful tone of colors in there. And then now we can take our pink and our yellow. Maybe create a few more scoops. So I'm showing you this so that you learn that you can come in after and add more color if you want. So now I've toned down a little bit of that yellow and just added a little bit. more orange by mixing those two. The next thing I want to show you is the teal, white, and yellow. Now I can make more of a green 
turquoise or teal here. See, we don't have really have that anywhere. So I'm going to add a little bit of this in here. Add a little bit more color. I'll saturate it a little bit more there. Okay, before we come in with our buildings, I'm going to add another layer of gray, just a few subtle, subtle hints. Remember, the more black you use to create a darker gray, the more dramatic it will look. You'll create more contrast. So me personally, I want to have the most contrast in my buildings against the sky. So I'm just using a light shade. It's like a probably a slate gray and I'm even going to lighten it just a little bit more here because I know it'll dry darker. So I'm just going to come in here just with the end of my brush. Down below. And before I forget, I'll Somewhat mimic what's going on up there and what I've just added. Okay, so I'm not going to do too, too much there. So the brush that I have here is a number 10 flat. It is brand new. I'm trying this for the first time, so I hope I like this. And it's by the Lerman Decor Incorporated. I got a whole set of these at Walmart. So I am, and that's in Canada. So depending on what country you live in, you might have different options and availability. So with a bit of water, black paint, I'm gonna come in. I'm going to add my line. I'm just going to define my horizon line. Okay, and you can make your buildings smaller or taller than what I'm making mine. I'm just gonna kind of make them be about this high. So see with a square brush like this, you can just start coming in and making rectangles and squares. You can even have angles, different heights. And then just down below, we'll just do a simple pull, click, and you can kind of slide and wiggle, 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 tight little slide together like that. What's really neat is when you have more of a dry brush like I did there, and you just pull and look at all those little pits of the canvas that the paint didn't cover look like the windows and the lights in the building. Isn't that easy? Did nothing but it looked like I took the time to make all those windows. So now I'll make a skinnier building right here. You just want to keep changing it up.
and then you can pick a few buildings that maybe you add some lines on the side. Simple, simple things we're doing here, guys. Anybody can do this. You can make some pointy shapes on the top. We'll do the same thing down below. Pull and flick. Put a little bit of water on your brush if it starts to dry out too much. Come over with a little bit more black on this one like we've got those lines there so i'm just gonna add a little bit like that i think this is really cool already and this is so simple it's actually really really fun to paint too because we're using all these pretty colors so we can do some shorter ones different sizes Maybe some skinny skyscrapers in the background. And let that just drip down there and just pull, flick. I've got a few cityscapes and a playlist that's cityscapes and nightlife. So if you're enjoying these and want to see more, make sure you have a look through that playlist and I'll be sure to add the link here for you as well. Sometimes I add the video or playlist links at the very end of the video and sometimes I'll put them right below in the description box. So wherever you want to have a little bit more layers in your buildings, you can just do little lines. And then that tight, sort of S-like wiggle. You don't have to do that on all of them. You can just pick a few if you want. And that gives a really nice um, water feel. 
of our ripples and movement. So yeah, there's a few ways of approaching it. So we'll pick a few areas here to add a little bit more black to. Okay, and now I'm just going to take a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of whatever colors that you have here. Just make any one of those pastel colors and you can add some lights like that on your buildings. Super easy, right guys? Now I'll make more of the, the teal. You can come this way. So it all just depends on how much color you want. It's really like, I think it's just as nice to have it just with the black and the light uh, transparent um, black and watered down grayish kind of a look. I'm just going to take a little bit more black here. And just set these in here a little bit more with a darker edge. You can add more and layer at any time. It's really, really easy. Your very own cityscape. I have a few other little ones in here. Another tip is kind of taking off with a little bit of water some of the black, exposing those pretty colors that we have underneath. And that makes a really neat look to the shadows and the reflections in the water. I'm going to add a final dab of highlights here. So we've got like, you know, all the little street lights and the store lights and the cars. Lights from the harbors and marinas and just all of the 
on an exciting nightlife. So just tapping a little bit here, right at the base of, of there. Just look at simple, simple brush strokes like that. Just a, just a little tap. And again, whatever colors you want to use. And if you want, you can pull down those colors in the water. Okay. So I think I'm going to call this one done. And I hope you guys are enjoying these um, more focused in-depth tutorials. If you are, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and leave a link below. So over the past month, this January, I've shown you guys so many different tutorials and in case you missed any, I'm just gonna go through them all really quickly with a little slideshow right now, sort of a slideshow. I'm just gonna hold these paintings up and show you. So there's this one. There's tutorials for all of these and I'll leave links below for you guys so you don't miss out. And each one of these is broken down into um, simple, easy steps, um, full length videos so you can all learn how to paint these at your own pace no matter what skill level you're at. We've got a cute little fantasy teacup here. This one's actually on Patreon. And to go with a teacup, a teapot of course. And maybe you guys have seen this cute little one too, the little fantasy acoustic guitar. This one, I think you guys might have seen this one just the other day, Flower Fairies. And there's a little castle, there's a little castle there with a staircase, kind of like a stairway to heaven or to a little fantasy world there. And this one, this one's really neat. Um, I haven't actually put this one on YouTube yet. It's on Patreon for early access. So um, maybe you guys, depending on when I put this video, maybe you've seen this one already. Um, this one's really cute. So we've got a few little hidden figures here. I like those uh, paintings that kind of you need to look at a few times so you don't miss anything. And then we've got some flower sisters or flower friends to go along with that one. And a fun seahorse, fantasy seahorse. So this could be like a crown or in this case, it's a castle. Maybe it's a castle crown. So thanks so much for watching this video today. I want to wish you guys happy painting and stay positive. You can do this. I'm here cheering you guys on. You've got this. And I want to show you guys how you can paint all the easy steps it takes to building up a painting that you never thought you could do. I love doing that. I love bringing that out in people. So join my channel and paint along with us. Bye, everybody.